today we will be focusing on N4 reverse time series extension as well as the rolling forecast feature. What I have here is a Contoso dataset. I have stored countries on the rows, I have year month date hierarchy in the columns and then I have actuals. You could see on the grid I have values from January 2023 to September 2023. That is because those are the months I have the actuals for. Now in a typical forecasting situation, if you are an Excel user, you would just add three columns for October, November and December 2023 and plug in your forecast values. What we in Forever have done is that we have taken the Excel type data input functionalities and we have brought that inside Power BI. And not only that, we have enhanced it and made it smarter by including features such as automatic actuals accommodation and automatic rolling forecast rollover, which I will show you in a bit. The first step is that you would need to add this future time dimension columns that is for October, November and December in this grid and then plug in your forecast values. That's the first step. To do that, you would need to go to the insert tab on the Info River toolbar up top and then click this forecast button. We will show you a window asking what are all the future time dimensions that you would like to add to the grid. In my case, it has to be October 2023 and December 2023. I'll click next. We would ask you to give you a name for the measure. We'll ask you to choose from what period you would like to forecast from, which is October. By definition, that means Jan to September are closed. So you would need to load it with actuals. So it will ask you to choose from which measure you would like to load the actuals with. In my case, it has to be the actuals measure. For October, November and December, you have quite a few options. You can either stage it with some initial set of data or you can leave it blank. To stage it with some initial set of data, I can go here and click actuals. I can copy prior ranges. I can copy Jan, Feb, March to October, November, December or I can copy Feb, March, April to October, November, December or I can copy just a single period's values to all these months or I can calculate an average of a range and copy over to these months. In my case, let me just leave it blank. Once you click create, you would see we have added this forecast measure for all these months. You would see that for January to September, the forecast measures have been highlighted as gray. The reason is that they are all closed periods. For closed periods, we have copied over the actuals to forecast. 9.36 in the actuals, 9.36 in the forecast for September, 8.52 in the actuals and 8.52 in the forecast for August. And the same thing applies to January as well. Now you would see that we have added future time dimensions in this grid for October, November and December. You could then start plugging the forecast numbers. So let us say I anticipate 1200 million for October. There you go, you have it. You can distribute it by weights of another columns or you can distribute it equally. Let us say I want to distribute it by weights of some other column. I can go here and then I can choose the other columns. I can do the same for November too. You see here, we have added the forecast values for future time dimensions right inside this grid. Even though those months haven't been brought into the grid via the Power BI dataset. Now, let us say we are at the end of October and the actuals are in. Let me choose the slicer selection for October. You would see Info River has automatically accommodated the actuals inside this grid. Previously, we only had forecast and since we have brought that into this grid via the Power BI dataset slicer selection, we automatically render that and show both actuals and forecast inside this grid. Now, as a part of rolling forecast, you would like to close out the period for October too, just like how you've done for the prior periods. To do that, you need to go to the insert tab, choose manage measures, click this edit icon for this forecast series and then change this forecast period from October to November and then click update. Once you do that, you would see that we have copied over the actuals to forecast. 9.51 in the actuals here, 9.51 in the forecast here, 
for the month of October. Now, you can go to grand total and see how we are doing. Looks like we are doing real well. So I'll just leave this number same for November. And let us say we are at the end of November and then we bring in the actuals inside the grid. You could see immediately we have rendered the actuals inside this grid too. Now, as a part of rolling forecast situation, you want to roll over the actuals to forecast for the month of November. You can go to manage measures here, click edit, and then change this period from November to December and then click update. You could see here we have done the same. We have copied over the actuals to forecast for the month of November. This is InfoAdverse time series extension and rolling forecast feature. To recap, you could add future time dimension columns into this grid and start plugging in your forecast numbers. And you could also do monthly or cyclic rollovers where we will copy over the actuals to the forecast. Thank you.